Oh, here I am. Hello. Hello, you guys. We can see me now. All right. Oh, you can tell it is almost the end of the year when we don't know how to live stream. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the industry, you guys. If you are here live with me, please say hello in the comments. I am very excited and a little bit sad, but this is exciting. This is the final industry episode of the year. We're going to take a two-week break over Christmas and the holidays. So if you are here with me live, please say hello in the comments. Let me know if you have been enjoying the industry series over the last couple of months. This has been really exciting for myself and for the team and for the community to be having these discussions and doing this series with you guys every week. So if you've been loving it, please let me know in the comments. Just a reminder, if, if maybe you're catching this episode is the first time ever. All of the previous episodes are in this Facebook group in the It's Exo Jinji Facebook group. In the guide section, you will see the industry guide and you will see all the replays. We also share the episodes on the Stephanie Ann Houston podcast as well. So if you want to listen there, um, it's really fun to listen to the replays there as well. So as a reminder, this um, this series is really about um, bringing people on, bringing coaches on, and having discussions with me. A lot of the time, a lot of the times we bring on people from the community, and it's more of like asking me questions, and I give my responses. Sometimes we bring people on, and it's more about getting to know the person and them sharing their story of how they have built their online coaching business, and it's just meant to be super fun and valuable for all of all of us involved. So with that being said, we might have some extra time on this um, this episode today for me to do a little rapid fire Q&A. So if you're on live and you have a juicy, spicy, exciting question that you want to ask me, whether it's something strategy, more mindset, more general, put it in the comments. And if we have time at the end, uh, Jake will just rip off some and, and I'll give some some juice and some thoughts and some whatever you guys want and, at the end of this episode. So is there anything else that I want to say before we keep going? Is there anything else I have to say? I don't think there's anything else. Okay. So we are, I am very actually excited to bring on today. We have Judy coming on and, and we're going to give Judy a minute to um, introduce herself and, and she can share more about her to you guys. But what I want to say and why I'm so excited to have Judy on is because I know I'm putting her on the spot a little bit right now, but everyone we invite on this um, series, we invite for a reason. And Judy is someone who is new in my world and she's new to the online coaching space. And the reason that we wanted to bring her on is one, we love her and she's fabulous and I want the world to get to know her. But I think that it's really cool and really valuable to learn from people who are just stepping in and new into the online coaching space and kind of think and, and learn about their thought process of, of why they want to step into the online coaching space, like where they're coming from and what the journey looks like. And I think that um, it's just really valuable to hear the stories because wh whether you're new or thinking about coming into the space or you've been, you know, having your online coaching business for a while now, I just think it's valuable to hear people's stories because we're all so different and we all have different backgrounds and goals and, and whatever. So I'm, I'm just very excited to share Judy with you guys. So I'm going to bring up Judy and don't be nervous woman, just share who you are what you do and your kind of journey stepping into the space and we'll go from there. Okay. Hi Steph. Hello everybody. I'm so excited to be here and ooh, really nervous. This is like um, an amazing opportunity to come on and talk to you guys about who I am and what I do. So my name is Judy Pearl. I am a mindset and health coach for women. I'm also a full-time um I'm also a full-time pediatric registered nurse and I am a mom of two little ones. So what I do is I help women discover and create a life that like absolutely lights them up through radical responsibility and a self-awareness from the inside out while building true self-belief. And that is what I, and that has become my journey and it will continue to be my journey. And I'm so excited to help women like, create and discover that life that lights them up because we get stuck in what we believe is like, what we believe will bring us happiness. But what I've discovered is that I had checked off all the 
boxes and I was asking myself, do I want to do this for the next five, 10 years? And I didn't. So then I finally said yes to myself. And then the self-awareness piece of what I do, I talk about more than just, I talk about more than just like the thoughts and beliefs, like a lot of mindset coaches. I also talk about like understanding how the food and the lifestyle choices that we make affect us physically and mentally by educating people about the importance of blood glucose. So that is what I do. (laughs) I love it. So I have a question for you. And I think that this is fun to ask is how did you find the online coaching space? And and what was what was about it that was like, Oh, I want to be in it. So I work at like, I have a very fulfilling job. I love my job. But at the same time, I like what I was saying, I just wasn't happy. And I felt unfulfilled. And I wanted to give back in another way. In the hospital, we help people in acute situations. But there was so much more that people needed help with. So I started listening to podcasts, I found Heather. Um, She was my first business coach in June. And she helped me set everything up. And it was like this really exciting, scary, nauseating. I don't know what it's about, but let me jump in. Like, I just knew that if I didn't do that, then I would feel like I would regret it for the rest of my life. So then I, I said, yes, I jumped in. Like I had no idea in May about this personal development journey. Like no idea. Like I've never picked up a, well, I picked up one personal development book in my life, but then I was like, I binged it all. I like watched all of the free stuff that I could from her. And then I watched all of the free stuff from you. And then in, I think it was September, I was like, okay, I'm going to do the um, influencer coach mastermind. I'm going to sign up for your collective. And I just, I've jumped like feet first and like binge, like this is like my new addiction. And I'm so excited to share like this feeling and this excitement and this expansion with other women because like, you just don't know what you don't know. And then when you discover it, you're like, oh my God. Oh my God. I know. And I say it all the time is like, there's conversations that you don't even know exist happening. So like have the courage and the bravery to jump into something because your world will just completely change and your mind will be blown. And I, and I, I want to talk about this for a second, because this is the reason why I really, really love you. And I, I, and I admire you and I resonate with you is like, you are at the very beginning of your journey and you dove right in right away and said, I want to be in higher level spaces. I want to be right in. Like, I I don't just want to dabble around. Like I, I, from the very beginning, you really dove in and you just said, I'm all in. Do you want to share, like, was there fear? Like what came up around really just diving in? Like what, what was the real behind the scenes, the thought? Because I feel like a lot of people, whether they're beginning or even more advanced face all of the fears and the things, but you obviously worked through it to be able to lead yourself to invest in and learn when it, maybe it didn't really make sense because you're at the beginning. So I would love to know like the real, like what were the thoughts? What was it like behind the scenes as you were making these decisions to step into something really big? So I did not know anything about this coaching world, like I've said. And I feel like in hindsight, I wasn't that confident in myself. I didn't know, like I hadn't grown in the past two, three years compared to the last six months. And my, like I helped statement from the beginning, what like the end part of it was I wanted to help women um, for like find more confidence and courage to start living their life with like gratitude and abundance. And that piece of it just really like, I lived in integrity and practiced with what I preached with regards to that statement. And I feel like it's, it's absolutely changed my life with like the mindset, the beliefs and thoughts. And it's, I've been able to like reprogram my identity to create someone who I'm so excited to see. Like, I have no idea where I'm going to go, but like you always said, like, there's no glass ceiling in this industry and there's no glass ceiling in, well, there shouldn't be a glass ceiling ceiling in life because life is like, a constant opportunity to grow and learn and become this like up-leveled version of yourself so the sky's the limit and even like beyond I love that I love that so much and I feel like that's the mindset to have is because and, and I hear you talk or you hear me talk about this all the time and for everyone listening it's like we have to remember that 
we all get to create our own versions of whatever it is that we're creating. And so it's like, not even like there's no glass ceiling, but we all have our own version of creating what we're creating, you know, not even in terms of like income and, and business success, but like our own version of what it looks like to build a coaching business, our own kind of offers are the way that we want to sell the way that we want to set it up. Like, I think we get so caught up in thinking like it needs to be a certain way. And then we compare like, Oh, she can do this. And so can I, yes. But also it just, it makes me so excited for everyone of like, even especially new people. Like I want you to just come in and trailblaze, do it in a way. And like, Judy, you blow us all out of the water. Like you do something <laughs> crazy that shocks the world. And I believe that we sometimes forget that we all have the power to go and create something that hasn't been done before. And just because you're on year one or whatever, doesn't mean that you have to be behind or you have to be slower. or You have to do it the way that you see other people doing it. It's like, I want to see us all do it in our own way and us all blow each other's minds. <laughs> and, and I think that we forget that sometimes that's the point. So I love this so much. Did you have specific things that you wanted to ask or talk about on the show today? I did. I had two questions for you, but okay. you just reminded me of something that I really love about this industry too. And Melanie, your mentor talked about it. She talks about like feminine and masculine like ways of leading. And I just love the fact that in this industry, like the feminine leadership really comes out. And even though we are all at different levels, like we have a choice to put ourselves in rooms where people just genuinely want us to succeed. And if like the person, if we find a person who is like really negative energy, like we have a choice to decide whether or not we want that energy in our life. So I think it's really great that this is the first industry that I've walked into or an environment that I've walked into where people genuinely want you to succeed and grow and learn. And it's not like, oh, I'm higher than you. You're lower than me. Like you have no idea. Like we're all adding to this like collective knowledge of making the world a better place. And I know it sounds so corny, but I really feel that way. <laughs> Honestly, and this makes me so happy that you're bringing this up. And because there is talk in the industry of people being like, so and so was on a pedestal and all this stuff. But like everyone who thinks that made that up in their own mind. That's not true. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I believe exactly what you're saying is like, we all want each other to win. We're all doing our own thing and we're all helping each other in our, in our own kind of ways. Like in my experience, in my spaces and the spaces that I've been in, 99.999% of people are like so welcoming. So like, come on in, like sit at the <laughs> table with me. I love you. I want to learn from you. I'm going to teach you my thing. Like that's what I think is happening. And there are some people who see it as pedestal or you're better or whatever but everyone who thinks that made up that story themselves like no one's saying I'm the best so you must follow me we're we're making up stories about each other so I'm so happy that you just said from your experience you, it's so welcoming it, it's because it is 99.9 percent .9 of people in this space are so welcoming are so loving want everyone to succeed and I think we need to focus on that more than anything so I agree okay um, what is your question? Okay, so my first question I'm going to start with, I dove feet first into this industry in June. Like I said, I joined the collective in September and <clears throat> I dipped my toes in like all sorts of different things and it has absolutely changed my life and I had no idea this world even existed in May. So my question is, how can I reframe my thoughts to hold the energy and confidence with potential clients who have been in the game longer than me because I have just started recently but I feel like I've put myself in containers and with what I've seen like I know that what I have to offer is valuable for anybody like I truly believe that I can help people even if they've been in the game longer than me so this I believe for everybody and especially you is literally the fact that you are just starting means nothing in terms of your ability to help people. The fact that you are just new and starting and it, you're build, building your coaching business doesn't mean that you are not a phenomenal coach. So you have to focus on who you are and the work that you do as a coach and not make it mean something about the fact that you're just beginning your coaching business, that you're not going to be taken as seriously. So lead with massive confidence and lead with the fact that you know how to help people. You, yeah, you can be in year one of your business or month six or whatever. That's you just beginning building a business, but you're not a business coach and you're not teaching people how to build a business. You are 
the coach that you're a coach in and, and your magic is, is strong and it doesn't matter if you're just beginning or not. If you lead with that power and that confidence, people will not care if you're in month five or six or year one of building your business. They, are, they will feel your energy, feel your audacity, feel your confidence and want to hire you because you are powerful now. Okay, I think I, I received that. Thank you. I received all of that. <laughs> and I'm working on receiving one of the things that I'm working on. So thank you for that. Thank you for that reminder. And then my second question is, I un I'm going to start with, I understand that as a coach, I'm not acting as a medical professional. And I'm speaking from my own lived experiences. And then we have the medical world, like therapists and physicians who diagnose and they're able to help people in their own scope of practice in their own way and they can diagnose and they have like a whole nother world but at the same time I feel like in a lot of ways we're the same but very different yeah so my question was what would you say to someone who has no idea about the coaching world and the big shifts we can provide who believes that therapy is the only modality that will be useful in their life just because they don't know what coaching is so this is where I think it's really powerful to share our own stories and our own transformations, right? So share your story of, or not even your story, story or your own thought and reasoning about why coaching is powerful. Not that it's better, but that it's different than therapy or other modalities. And I think that if you focus on sharing your own story and your own experience within coaching and just sharing how you are going to help people as a coach, people will see that resonate with that and see the result in that and choose you. You know what I mean? So if you feel like you have an audience of people or they're not used to the coaching industry, you get to be the one that introduces this to them. You get to be the one, you yes. are the one. And remember that like, how exciting is it that you get to educate people? But I think the best way to do that without feeling like pushy or being like, this is why you choose me or whatever is just share genuinely why you do what you do how the coaching space has helped you your own story so people can see like oh right like like this is how coaching has helped you um but but just focus on showing people your work and why your work is amazing and i when when people will continue to see how your what your work is and how it's amazing they're going to want to lean in and work with you and whatever that capacity is following you on social media a, a, a class hiring you as a, a long-term mentor or whatever that looks like just focus on who you are and what you do and showing people that over and over again. It's like when I started, it was like, why would someone choose me an online fitness coach? You know, it's like, we all have the same thought. Like, why would someone choose me when they could just go down the road to their gym or pick someone else? But I was like, no, I'm going to be the one that shares my way and I'm going to show people that my way is amazing. And the people who feel that my way is amazing are going to hire me. It's the same thing even today. Like, even though I have, hi, Ocean is saying hello. Um, an audience of mostly people who are in the coaching industry. It's like, I'm just focused on this is my way. And I believe in my way. And I'm going to show people my way. And I trust that the people who want to be in it will come in it. Okay, thank you. I. I think what I'm going to work on is receiving all of that and like, again, stepping into my own confidence and courage and just, this is this con it's a constant growth thing. So I'm so excited to be a part of the collective, a part of your world. And I take what I need from all of the coaches that I've watched. And I'm so excited to like share this with the world because this, this, the ripple effect that we have on, on the world is we can't even comprehend like it's illogical like the work that we do will go on for generations <laughs> ah, I'm so happy well it, it is I'm so grateful that we are connected I'm so excited for you like I see you I'm so happy to support you and I'm excited for now more people in our community and the world to get to connect to you and I don't know if maybe the team or after we can put your oh we have some we're probably going to bring up something your Instagram so people can go connect and follow if, if they resonate which is going to be awesome um, before we move on, I think Jake is bringing something up. Yeah. So if you look at the screen now, Judy, um, just a snapshot of your Instagram here. Um, so I kind of noticed on your Instagram, a lot, a lot of people tend to kind of separate their business and, and their personal, um, but it looked like for you, I don't know if this was on purpose, but it, 
it's it's a it's like a 50 50 it's a mix of both so it's a lot of your home life your personal life mixed in with with some you know some advice or some tips uh so was that kind of like a, a strategy that you're doing or are you still kind of working on what that's going to look like for you um no it's not a strategy it's just me living my life and sharing my life with people and how much sharing how much everything that I've learned has changed it and how if you want to do something you can do it despite being a mom despite working full-time like I'm gonna remind everyone that you can absolutely create a life that like lights you up or you're so excited to get out to jump out of bed in the morning to do what you want to do even if you have like x y and z it's not, you don't have to be confined by your circumstances. You can shift your beliefs and thoughts and your identity to live the best life that you want, however that may look. Your success is different than my success. And even though I, I've i just started, I'm able to, I like, health is more than just physical health. Health is about, like, physical, mental, your social being, and you can have it all. So there wasn't a strategy behind my Instagram page. It's just me living my version, my best version of my life. I love that. Everyone needs to go follow Judy for, like, the most <laughs> positive vibes ever. Like, are you not obsessed with this human? I'm like, I, everyone needs to go follow and be in your, you're the most genuine, positive, kind, happy person I've, I've literally come across. We all agree on this. I feel like this is the vibe. You're amazing. You're amazing. Thank, Thank you. you for being on Judy. I'm excited for people to get to know you and connect with you. And, you know, I can't say it enough. We're so grateful that you are part of our community and I'm excited to continue to support you and building, building an incredible dream and in, in business and allowing you and helping you help the people in the world that you're meant to help. So you are the best. Thank you. Okay. Bye. All right. So I don't know if, if there's things, do we want to do a little riff? Do we have riffs? Are there questions? If those of you who want fire round from Steph in the comments. Well, there's just a few that mostly positive, but you know, why, like kind of, why is this industry, why does it revolve around happiness? Why there, you don't hear that in any other industry. You don't go to work because it's a workplace of happiness. That's just not a thing. But why in this industry is that it's so important? Well, I, for many reasons, one, I think like if we are, if we are being coaches and coaches help other people, we have to be as happy as we can be. And so I think that it's like a value that most coaches hold is because it's like, for me, I want to be the happiest version of myself because that makes the work that I do with my clients better. And that, that makes my clients happier. And like, so there's, there's that, but I also think because of the paradigm of how we're building businesses that it's like, you're right, Jake, like other, well, I think, um, other companies or jobs are doing better now, like, um, focusing on health and mental health and happiness, but like, we're now building businesses that get to be, um, um, like a value gets to be our own health, our own happiness and, and building business and working in a way that supports our health and our happiness. And I think that most coaches, cause we're entrepreneurs, we can build it from home or, or whatever. We get to fit our businesses in our lifestyle and we get to fit our businesses in, in a way that makes us feel good. So it's like a value within business. And it's obviously just like, I mean, how could you be a coach that's miserable? That just doesn't work. <laughs> what else is coming up you guys anything not a whole lot of questions a lot of agreements okay massive action alignment is key everyone starts somewhere um that was that jay was, is on that was a good point um that it's not about your your experience as a coach it's about your life experience that comes before which doesn't really put anyone at a disadvantage anyone on day one could have as much experience as a coach on day a thousand and, and the thing is, is trusting that your experience is enough. You know what I mean? Because a lot of imposter syndrome comes in of like, but who am I to teach this? Because we're judging that our story or our transformation or our way is not enough, but it definitely is. You know, it's like, even like I was saying to Judy about the fitness thing, like when I started my fitness coaching business, it was like, well, who's going to choose my programming? Who's, why this one? Like people could choose anyone, but I, I just believe that if it worked for us, like we are all our own transformation. If it worked for us, I think we're meant, 
not necessarily everyone, but we get to share it and it gets to work for other people. And I think that's the most incredible thing. Like when I had my own fitness transformation and, and I felt so good, I was like, I want other people to feel this. And so I know how to share my way. If, if my way helps one person feel good with fitness, like I want that for someone, you know what I mean? So it's like, I think that we get in our heads when we start to add the business aspect to it. Cause then we're like, oh, it, how many people are buying or is it good enough and like all of that shit. But if we just focus on like, this is what I believe in. I want to help people. You focus on that. You're going to have a much better time. And that's, that's how you build the business success anyways. So yeah, maybe this will just be a shorter episode today. I'm looking, I'm looking. No, it's all good. I'm like, what do I want to say to you guys as we end the year? Maybe I'll riff on that. You can kind of wrap up. I know we just finished wrap up, but wrapping up on what this year was now that even wrap up is done. You know, like you have no programs from now till the end of the year. Well, you know what I realized, you guys? Because this year I was like, okay, we're going to end all things early December, like I, like earlier than normal. And now I'm like looking at the calendar. I'm like, there's only two weeks. Like I should, I'm, next year I'm giving myself even more time. <laughs> That's what I learned after the wrap up. No, I just, I feel like this is a common theme that I, I said this in the wrap up radio. For those of you who did the wrap up radio, I said this in the wrap up program. I really just want to see coaches. I want to see you guys like go have the time of your life. I think this is going to be the message that I share until I die. Go have the time of your life. This is meant to be so fun. I think that we get so caught up with like doing the right thing or the wrong thing or what is someone else doing or I'm not far ahead yet or they're there and I'm here and I'm like this just like drains me to even say and even think about and I think that we're all going to create something much better if we focus on doing our own thing, having fun and building a business the way that we want to build it. Like and like if we stay there, we're all going to do really incredible collective work together and we're really happy. I think that we're getting really caught up with like, you know, in our own lane, but let me look over here and see what they're doing. Let me look over here and see what they're doing. And it's like, no, just stay in your own lane, do your thing and trust your process. Like I really want to see us do that. And I want to see the creator style coaches that I talk to of like, if you identify as a creator, like you're here to create coach, but like you're here to create your own brand, your own business, your own way, like go run wild with that, go do whatever that looks like. And when we stay in that energy, it doesn't even make sense to compare because it's like you're doing it your way. And that's also too why I was saying to Judy, like go and create something that you want to create that you've never, you know, saw done before. Like that's the point of all of this. And I think, I think if we all stay there, we're going to be healthier in an industry and not be so judgmental of like what everyone else is doing if we can support and love each other and realize we're all just doing it our own way and and i i think like that is gonna keep a healthy culture and that will keep us in our own lane doing the kind of work that we're here meant to do with our clients yeah we have a question oh what is it um i feel like you get this one like somewhat all the time. Frequently, yeah, but uh, how do you work on emotional intelligence? I was asked this in the wrap up radio and I didn't answer. It. <laughs> so, my experience with this is having a mentor really helped me with emotional intelligence because before, when I didn't have a mentor, I would just ignore how I was feeling and not deal with it. So, I my way of working through emotional intelligence is having a soundboard, a mentor to be able to speak to and get support with around how I'm feeling and what I'm navigating so I can recognize, recognize my emotions and then deal with the problem or the thing from a neutral energy. So it's about what is your way of being able to notice and recognize how you're feeling and not bypass it, but not make decisions or try and solve problems from a highly emotional state. So it does really come back to self-awareness. And I think that's the number one thing is, is when we have self-awareness, we can notice that we are in an emotional state or we're triggered or whatever, and we can recognize that and honor it, but not try and, and act from a very reactive state. So it, it does come back to self-awareness. So however you can, you know, um, 
you know, work on your self-awareness. And, and for me, the most powerful thing is having a mentor where it's like you're not just able to have someone be a soundboard so you can notice your, your self-awareness, but your mentor will help hold you to a high standard to be able to deal with things in business and as a coach from your highest self. Yeah. And so more practically, is it like kind of taking that time? Like you said, you want at the end of the year, no programs, so you can basically focus on yeah, I mean, and this looks different, right? So for example, at the end of the year, if you have more space, you have more space to kind of reflect and decide on what you want to do and you have that space to kind of figure things out without being like heightened or stressed or whatever. But also the truth of it is this, and this is a lot of what I talk about in my work is like being entrepreneurs, being coaches, we are, we are forced because we're wearing a lot of hats to have to deal with a bunch of stuff in the moment, right? Who can relate? You have something bad happen behind the scenes. You have to jump on a coaching call in three minutes. Your kids are freaking out. You're in a, you're in a fight with your partner and someone just defaulted on a payment and someone made a bad comment <laughs> about you. And this, all these things just happened in the same four minutes. You are then forced in that moment because you have to, to be able to sit with how you feel and be able to then go do the thing that you're committed to and then figure out how to solve the problem after, you know? And so I, our emotional intelligence gets built by just throwing ourselves in this crazy life that we decided to be entrepreneurs, business owners, CEOs, coaches at the same time. Like we just learn how to navigate it by, we just don't have a choice sometimes, but this is where I think a lot of coaches crash or burn because it is a lot to handle. And if you, you don't figure out a way to handle it, it's going to be too much. And then you just can't handle it. Like emotional intelligence, resiliency, learning how to decompartmentalize things and say, this is stressing me out over here, but I have to go on and do a live show. So I'm going to have to figure it out later. Like it's just part of it. So if you're, and this is where I get like, thank you, Jake, for bringing this up. Like this is why it's not just being a coach, we're entrepreneurs. And if we're choosing to be entrepreneurs, it means you have to deal with a lot of things at once sometimes, and you have to decide to be someone who can handle it all. And, and in my experience, we all are capable, but it's just, is it easy? No. Is it a choice? Yes. So we grow our capacity just by dealing with it all at once. <laughs> uh, and when you say mentorship, is that you know, like a one-to-one -one mentor or is that group programs or what does that look like? I, you know, here's my take on this today is whatever, whatever is accessible to you and whatever you want. So if, if you think that you can get an, a, the support from being in a group program and that's like amazing and you feel like that's the, the level of support you want and that works for you, amazing. There's some people who are just because of their lifestyle, where their business is at, they're like, they don't want any group, anything. They want to have a one-to-one -one and it's only one-to-one. -one. You know what I mean? So I think that it's different for everyone. And, and I, being the coach that I am and having the business that I have, like I have one-to-one, -one. I have masterminds, I have groups, and I have things that are like, you know, like the radio broadcast that we did now. And I think all of those are a hundred million percent supportive. It's just, everyone is different. So you've got to choose the one that actually feels supportive for you and that looks different for everyone and what that looks like in the season of your life and your business will change and evolve. You know, I, I don't think that you have to have a one-to-one -one coach. I strongly say that, you know, I changed people's lives in that four day broadcast and it was a, it was just a live broadcast, but I can confidently say that I changed lives and I help people change their lives in my, my masterminds and my one-to-one. -one. It's choose the container that is most supportive and expansive for you. And obviously pricing and the cost does, you know, um, that is important. So, so choose what you can join, what makes sense for you financially and what feels supportive for you right now. Yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. Well, we might wrap up. We might wrap up. So this is what I want to say, you guys. Oh, thank you for an incredible year. Honestly, we had this was a really, really, really big year and, and I can't even go through everything right now in this context because my mind is going to explode, but it has been a, a huge year for so many different reasons and for so many different ways in my life and in my business. And, you know, things have really skyrocketed, skyrocketed. We've created things that I had no idea we were going to create this year, including the show, The Industry. I've met people that I, that I'm so grateful to have met. I'm, I'm so beyond 
grateful and happy that you are part of this community. Um, if you're in the collective and you do life with me, if you're in my mastermind, if you're a private client, you know that I love you. Um, or if you're just in this community and you're watching this free show, I'm so grateful. We are excited to really continue to take things to the next level with the industry until the rest of our lives, right Jake? Until we die. <laughs> um, and I have a lot of really exciting new things that I will be bringing to the collective, my year membership, the programs with me. And we have some brand new different kinds of offers that you're gonna see come in my world that are different coaching offers that I've never seen shared before. And I'm just continued, I'm excited to continue to innovate myself because it's really fun for me to innovate, but I'm excited to show you guys um, just more creative things that I know are going to be of value and really entertaining going forward in 2023. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. If you, if you potentially want to be a guest in the new year on the industry, please don't hesitate to reach out and send a message message to team XO Jinji. And if it aligns, I would love to have you on because I would love to talk to you and I would love to feature you and, and you know, allow you to be a, a, a bigger role in our community. It really means the world to me. So, I don't know if you'll see me in here in the group live, you won't see me in here unless something crazy happens. You won't see us until the first Friday in January again. So have a beautiful Christmas, have a beautiful, um, I was gonna say Thanksgiving, <laughs> beautiful New Year's. I love you guys so, so, so much and I'll see you in January. Bye everyone.